How's it going, everybody? I hope you're having a great Tuesday evening. Uh, Coach Matt coming at you with another video. This is the Daily Baseball Report. If you've never been here before, we talk all things baseball. We cover all the big baseball news. And, of course, we go over all the games that happened on the previous day because I want to make sure you all know what is happening in the world of baseball. Today, I am actually not going to do a, a uh, recap video because it is the last day of spring training. Tomorrow's a day off for everyone. And Thursday, April 1st, is going to be the opening day. So today, I'm going to do my post preseason power rankings, which is basically the pre regular season power ranking for Major League Baseball. So, without further ado, let's get into the rankings. From 30 to about 10, I'm kind of almost do these rapid fire. There's not a lot that has to be said about these teams. We all know that they're in their specific positions. Some people might argue with some of them because they, you know, I just personally feel that these teams are worse or better than what NLB has or maybe than what you think. But if you do have uh, an opinion, please, in the comment section below, I want to have a discussion about this. Talk about where you think the team should be or shouldn't be. Did I give a team too good of a ranking? Did I give them too low of a re ranking, etc.? So, the first one, starting off with 30, is the Pittsburgh Pirates. There's just not a lot to say about these guys. Number 30. Number 29, Colorado Rockies. They, I don't even think Trevor Story is going to be on the team at the end of this at the trade deadline. He's gone, uh, in my opinion. Twenty eight is the Texas Rangers. There's just not a lot going on there. Just Joey Gallo, and that's about it. Twenty seven is the Baltimore Orioles. I wish I could keep these guys a little bit higher, but that is as high as I could rank them. Trey Mancini coming back and Ryan Mountcastle. We'll see what happens with them in this year. I rank them at twenty seven. Twenty six, the Florida Marlins. They're starting the year without Sixto Sanchez, which is a big bad move by the Marlins, but regardless. Regardless, that's where they're at. 25 is the Arizona Diamondbacks. Not a lot going on there. They've got Ketel Marte, and I don't think he's going to be on the team come trade deadline. 24, we've got the Detroit Tigers. They're kind of up and coming. They have some good pieces potentially, but it remains to be seen if they're all going to perform. Number 23 is the Seattle Mariners. With their GM gone, I feel like they're going to have a pretty decent season, and We'll see what happens. In the 22 spot, we have the Kansas City Royals. I want to give these guys a little bit better of a ranking. I really do. But their pitching is so up and down, it's hard to give them a higher ranking. Some days they're great. Others, they're just not so great. So I need a little bit more consistency from their pitching staff to put rank them any higher. Number 21 is the San Francisco Giants. Again, similar to the Royals. I kind of want to give them a higher ranking. I feel like they're better than on paper than they perform, but their pitching is a what if, big what if. If their pitching is around, then maybe they're going to be better. Coming in at the 20 spot is the Boston Red Sox. I feel like with Bobby Dahlbeck and Kike Hernandez, they're going to be a good team. And Xander Bogarts, they're going to be a good team. Coming in at the 19th spot, some people are probably going to have an issue with this one. The Cleveland Indians. I do not foresee them being a top team and a top 10 contender in any way, shape, or form. I just don't see it. That, you know, comment section below if you think not the other way. Coming in at 18 is the Cincinnati Reds. They lost Trevor Bauer. They did nothing to acquire anybody. D. Gordon isn't even on the team anymore, so... I feel like this is where they're going to be is 18. Coming in at number 17 is the Philadelphia Phillies. If their bullpen can do what a bullpen is supposed to do and not set records for worst bullpen of all time, then maybe they'll be a little bit higher. But for now, number 17. Coming in at number 16 is the Chicago Cubs. With the addition of Jock Peterson, I feel like the Cubs are going to be pretty decent. Jake Arrieta is going to have a good return to the Chicago Cubs. I feel like they're going to be pretty competitive. I do not, however, think they're better than the Cardinals or the Brewers. So 16 is as high as I can rank them. Speaking of the Cardinals, ranking at number 15, I've got the St. Louis Cardinals. I feel like they're going to have a pretty decent season. They always seem to come around right around all-star break. They seem to turn it around and have a good finish to every season. So we'll see how it goes. Coming in at number 14, I have the Anaheim Angels. I feel that, again, with them, it's about the pitching staff. If their pitching staff can show up, they will definitely rise in the power rankings very easy. But until they show that they can do it, I don't see them being any higher than 14. Coming in at 13 is the Tampa Bay Rays. 
with G Man Troy being out for some time, I you know I don't know if Randy Arozarena is going to be able to repeat what he did in the postseason. So number thirteen is where I keep the Rays. Coming in at number twelve is the Houston Astros. Some people might argue with me on this. Some people think this is a top 10 team. I do not see it. And with Carlos Correa potentially being traded at the middle of the year because they are probably not going to re-sign him means that they are probably going to sell at the trade deadline. Coming in at number 11 is the Milwaukee Brewers. I feel like Christian Yelich is going to have a good return to form season and they're going to have a much better overall season than they did last year. Coming in at number 10 is the Oakland Athletics. I feel like they will be a top contending team. I do think that they're probably going to be the team that's going to take run away with the AL West. That remains to be seen if, again, if they stay healthy and they're able to to compete at the highest level possible. Number nine is the Minnesota Twins. I feel like they are a really great team. And with Kenta Maeda leading that pitching staff, I feel like they're going to be in good hands. Number eight, we have the Toronto Blue Jays. And they've dropped a little bit than what I originally had them uh, because spring training hasn't been all that great to them. The uh, the bright side is Vlad has lost a lot of weight and Kevin Biggio is doing well. But regardless, I have them at number eight to start the season. Coming in at number seven is the Atlanta Braves. I know a lot of people are going to have an issue with the fact that the Atlanta Braves are number seven. But here's the deal. Their pitchers are doing great, but Freddie Freeman... Ron Acuna, uh, Ronald Acuna Jr., both are hitting under 200 for spring training. I don't foresee their hitters to cut just all of a sudden turn it around one day. So that's where I put them, seven. Coming in at number six is the New York Mets with Noah Syndergaard not coming back until later in the year and Marcus Stroman being up and down so far this spring. I have them at number six. Coming in at number five, I have the Washington Nationals. I know this is a big change from what people are seeing, but it's because the Nationals have performed well. Josh Bell is swinging free and easy. Ryan Zimmerman is swinging the bat really well. I think that the Nationals are more potent and more dangerous than the New York Mets and the Atlanta Braves right now. Coming in at number four is the Chicago White Sox. Even though they lost Eloy Jimenez for the next five to six months, I do feel that they are a very competitive team without him, and they're going to be just fine. They're just going to have a little bit less offensive production. Coming in at number three, I think the third best team in Major League Baseball is the New York Yankees. They are, even with Greg Bird being injured, they have so many good prospects coming up that will fill in those spots and bench players that will just be just fine. They are going to be just fine. Fine. I know Aaron Judge was out because he potentially had the quote-unquote illness, but he's fine. He's going to be ready for opening day. Coming in at number two. Oh, before we go into number two, the number two and the number one teams, I'm probably going to be doing a monthly power ranking video. So at the end of every month, I will recap the month and I will redo a power ranking system just because every month I feel that this is going to go up and down, just like you see in the NFL or in the M- uh, the NBA that there's going to be some rise in some teams and some drop in some teams based on how they perform. So without further ado, let's get into the final two. The number two team is the San Diego Padres. I do not think they are better than, obviously, my Los Angeles Dodgers. They are 100% the best team coming out of spring with Corey Seager and Justin Turner and Max Muncy swinging the ball really well, and potential Rookie of the Year candidate Gavin Lux just doing a great job. I do not think anyone is more put together all the way around than the Los Angeles Dodgers. That is my power ranking list for the opening day, first month of baseball. If you have any thoughts or comments, please down below. If you haven't been here before, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos, and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And without further ado, we'll see you all tomorrow.